Isn't that right? Ooh, I've, app I've apparently <laughs> gone full Bigfoot. Nope. I, don't... I love it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just too obscene for you people. I'm completely blurred out. Why did you spill uh, Vaseline I, I, on your camera? Again. I could use some ray tracing. You I could use some RTX ray tracing. On. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, Whatever the hell, Alex, we come up with this week. Steam is dropping support for Ubuntu. You and I didn't see that coming. We're going to be um, discussing that in a minute. An open source Final Fantasy. It's now a thing. Well, at least the engine is. And that's still kind of a kind of a... Let's take a look at it. Do you avoid comp machines run Linux? Well, the scum VM sure want them to. And do, ta do your tax dollars pay for pretty pixel art? Mine do, apparently. Steam got hit by the sack panic for a whole of two, possibly three days. And Windows-centric publications are mining the Linux sauce, looking for blue giants from a mediocre James Cameron movie. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Van, joined every week by our team Canadian podcaster, one Jordan Sveng, and all the way from the Isles of Britannia, that is one Pedro Mateus, who only talks about God, Steam. Um, and it's kind of a thing. It's terrifying, but you're also <laughs> terrifying. Shadrum Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's fantastic life organs. I see none of us wrote anything down, so spin the wheel of booga booga. Oh, I'll do it, because I have All XFCE right. keys for my new keyboard oh. <laughs> that apparently don't fit, so... <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finally ditch these fucking Windows keys, I'm gonna have like these nice little XFCE ones, they're gonna be great. No. Nope. 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 Wrong size. Oh man, I saw that like in Discord. Like a jackass. He was like, oh man, I got an arch key, and I was like, that should have been the caps key, and there was like this three to four minute... Just whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, I made a joke. Then I just get like all caps back in Discord. It's like, God damn it. It exists. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like, why? I'm, I'm, I'm mad that I didn't think of that because that would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out I'm an idiot. So. Womp, womp. What's up, Pedro? Uh, well, uh, to the stuff we're going to be talking about on the show, it's like, okay, uh, Popey, I, can, I have some games, I have like a hundred and something games on GOG, I can test a few if you'd like. And so I put laptops to use, I put Nori's laptop to use to test like the Intel drivers, and I put the um, Precision uh, to use to test with the NVIDIA drivers. And yeah, we'll get to it on the show, <laughs> but it wasn't pretty. Stay tuned. I, I'm... Um... <laughs> Oh boy, I'm trying to convince myself to buy a video encoder that's really expensive for the show, so uh there's nothing to report on that and I was like set up a drop cam where I'm going, well maybe if we do that, that, that I, I mean yeah, it's, it's, you should get you should get one with an Arch Linux logo. Oh, it'd be kind of brilliant. Then we then it would match the horse. I well I, I mean the horse isn't wearing an Ubuntu logo anymore. It's the Steam Linux! Stop day. All right, let's let's get into oh, it. Oh shit, son! Here we go. We got to do it. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be kind of a two-parter, but this all started uh, a couple of days back. But last night, uh, Pere Pierre Loop Pierre Pierre Loop Guru. I'm going to call him Pierre. <laughs> um, he Pure, writes, Pure Loop Guru. He drops a mad tweet, man, ladies and gentlemen. He's like, Ubuntu 19.10 and future releases will not officially support. Steam, uh, you know, Steam's done with this. Uh, we will evaluate ways to minimize breakage for existing users, but we'll also switch our focus to a different distribution currently to be determined. And oh my God! Why? 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 Why am Steam hate Ubuntu, Ven? <laughs> Dude, it, it was just the thing. It was a Thursday. He was bored. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll, we're, we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But Val, Val, Val or not Valve? Canonical has announced that version of uh latest or the next version of ubuntu 1910 will be dropping 32-bit support in its entirety mm -hmm. um unlike how red hat did it where um with fedora they just demoted 32-bit to a secondary architecture but still provides 32-bit packages for like mm -hmm. development libraries this is not happening in in um Ubuntu land. They have some. They have some uh, recommendations of what to do to you know work around this for now. But we're we're, we're going to get to that a little bit later in, in the news segment. Mm -hmm. Maybe one thing I do want to bring up. I think it was maybe Wednesday afternoon. It might have been Thursday. 
they, they put up a page. We're going to be talking about this in full in the news. This is just like, hey, PSA, you know, you've heard about it and we're going to talk about it. They did say we are. This is from Canonical. We're in discussions with Valve uh, about the best way to provide support for 1910, to which I don't think they remembered to tell Valve. That they, yeah, I don't think they remembered <laughs> to tell the people who work for them. Mm. It, it seemed like yeah. it was a surprise. There you go. There's a tease. <laughs> All right. That's not the only good news um, from Perry Re- No, Re- because yeah. uh, like sure. an hour before he made the tweet about uh, ditching Ubuntu, he said that the recent Linux kernel stable release is containing network security updates. The uh, one we talked about on Wednesday um, it's called, it, have broken it's, it's, the Steam client's ability to connect to our servers on many systems. A fix is already undergoing a review, but is not in, uh, is not in any release kernels as of yet. This was on the 21st. It is now, because Linus Torvalds himself went to Valve's GitHub and said, okay, can you try this patch? And the patch worked. And everyone's like, okay, yeah, the patch works, the patch works. And so Linus is like, okay, it's now uh, making its way to stable. So if you already have kernel 5114 or any of the like other branches, most recent versions, you have this fix in place. But it is significant and it is the second time in two months that the kernel has introduced something which breaks functionality in user land, where is the old Linus? The old Linus that would tear into people for breaking functionality yeah, yeah, okay, for the sake what, of... Well, sweetheart, see, sweetheart, really. sweetheart, are you trying to... We didn't see Linus uh, go back true to form earlier this week? Because he kind of did. Oh, oh, he did. <laughs> he straight up so, called bullshit on someone. <laughs> now, now he, 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 here's here's the thing. Uh, so someone, so I think someone brought up... Maybe, maybe it was you, Pedro. I don't remember. But you were talking about like a server-grade solution uh, that should have not been ingested. No, no. This this was someone talking about desktop Linux on Twitter. Uh, but that, that oh, this was is Pierre. That's the second yeah. tweet about oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. There. There you go. Um, so they're saying, "Oh, well, this is why we need a dedicated desktop Linux, uh, because this this is a problem that impacts servers." I'm like, "No, you. You know, what? if I were a real asshole, I would just compromise a game server to just send out like sack packets with um with like every gamer with every like sort of reply from the game server. That would just cause random people to kernel panic. That's like um that's like a significant thing that can be applied in not a yeah. significant amount of time. So it's good that people actually applied this fix because it's." It's kind of it's kind of a big deal. It is. It Just is. Just being able to and remotely it, crash it, your desktop that's not good. That's the thing. Remotely exploitable, and it would just straight up kernel panic whatever Linux box happens to be connected. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, and that and yes, they they the kernel guys kind of goofed when they rolled out a fix. Uh, because may- maybe due to lack of testing, maybe because the solution was not particularly well architected and Linus goes off on one of his little Linus, happy Linus fun rants, <laughs> TM. Um, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I mean, they, they, the kernel project has, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the kernel project has made it their primary concern to not break user space. This is, this is one of those weird exceptions where like, I don't feel bad about them breaking user space because it's, this is a pretty big deal. Sa- sack is kind of huge. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. All right, uh, we we got a little bit of a birthday. We do. Apparently, a certain mod has been around for about twenty years, and that mod turned into its own game, and then That's another right. game. Boys and girls, go feel old. And go then rock in a game. corner and look at look at the hair yep. in your hands. It's falling out. Because it's great. Two decades of Counter Strike, and to celebrate it, uh, Valve are reintroducing uh, the original D Dust Two layout to the uh, map lineup. If you're playing casually in Counter Strike Global Offensive, so go out there, shoot some chickens, and uh, relive the old map. Damn it, because... Pedro! That's your solution to everything. Go out there and shoot some chickens. I'm like, dude, I... Sh- shoot, shoot, <laughs> down here off. in Alabama, yeah. we shoot ourselves some chickens. In, in <laughs> Alabama? Is that, Alabama. Is that Alabama? See, uh, <laughs> the, the views and opinions expressed by Alabama by own Pedro, Pedro <laughs> at LinuxGameCast.com. That's where you aim that hate mail. Um, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's it's a nice thing to do. I, I have I have some I have some memories attached to D Dust too. It's cool, uh, and you know, I've never got into Counter Strike. I can definitely say it, it was like it, it came to Linux like almost twenty years too late for me. But when this was rolling out, you can think about nineteen ninety nine people, uh, my ancient ancient age, 
or like early, like 99, 2000, man, I would have been in that because oh, yeah, that, that was my jam back then, you know, first person uh, team deathmatch and stuff like that. Unreal tournament. I would, I would have got sucked into that hundred percent. Neo dodged bullet on that one. Yeah. So. If there was ever a map in the history of first person shooters ever, especially in the history of Counter-Strike mm -hmm. that I could play as a terrorist. And did you actually um, catch that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, if you play as a terrorist, I could, with my eyes closed, go from the spawn to point B or point A and plant the bomb. Hmm. That, that, for, for, for with me, my that eyes was, closed. Uh, for me, that's DE Aztec. I, I have, I have that map just like grilled in my head for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I played so much D Dust 2 in Counter Strike Source, it's not even pretty. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's talk about fat. Let's stop talking about fast paced shooters and talk about chess. It's it's amazing. <laughs> Auto chess. This is the second game from Valve in 2019. Actually, this is kind of the. All right. Maybe. All right. This is like half a game from Valve in 2019. This is a standalone mod. Oh, let's be technically, right. they're publishing you, it. You know what? We were just talking about a standalone mod. It was called Counter Strike. Um,. <laughs> It's true. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dota Underlords. This is now in public beta. It's available for Linux, and it is Vulcan-powered. I played a little bit of it with Jill last night, and we collectively spent like an hour and two minutes genuinely not figuring out what the fuck and or all we were doing. I'm not going to say we had a bad time, but there was definitely a time to be had. It's completely free to play, which is kind of Decent. The best what I got out of it. I mean, I kind of understand what's going on. You you get units, you add them up, and they get bigger and shit like that. Plenty of RNGs us going on. And it's got, like, the UI, which I didn't know it was also available on mobile, on Android and all that. But I should have, because the UI definitely kind of gives that away. I get it. This is what, one of the things I was saying last night. Was very unvalve like to early access a game and open it for community feedback unlike artifact by the way this overtook artifact by all-time player count in the first two hours mostly because free but also it wasn't like a 20 dollars buy-in to give them more money mm -hmm. yeah i i think i think they probably learned their lesson with artifact where it's like oh you know what maybe we should stop assuming what the community wants and start asking them but but that in, in and of itself is a double-edged sword, right? Because people don't know what the fuck they want. They really don't. If you ask if you ask them what they want out of a product, they'll give you a bunch of wishy-washy answers and stuff that they think is a good idea until they get it in their hands, and then they're like, no, I actually hate it. So I can, I can understand why Valve would be hesitant to you know uh, bring people into the development process fairly early on. But Auto Chess also has, like, a, Auto Chess is already pretty established, right? It has an active player base. Yeah, it's definitely... It's just, it, hey, yeah. Yeah, it's been around for a minute. And I mean, I get it. I see the appeal. It would be nice if it had a matchmaking system that wasn't just like parties, because you can join a party, then it kind of goes to the internet and finds another party and randomly matches. What I would like is a direct one on one say, hey, Jordan, I want to kick you in the teeth. Then after I got done doing that, we could play some auto chess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 although I think I think the whole point of this is it's supposed to be like six on six or something like that. It's like Hearthstone, man, with yeah board pieces that you don't well, control. It, 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 it's not it, it, like it, it, Hearthstone. It's, it's like it's Marvel gr heroes and Star Wars it's a, heroes. It, it's, it, it, it's like it's gratuitous <laughs> space battles with Dota. It is, it's <laughs> very conducive to having conversations while playing a video game because you really can just zone out and randomly click on shit and get by. Yeah, I was, because that's how these games play. That's why they're sounds. so popular on Android. How? Okay, <laughs> this was like the gameception because I was watching the game play after I clicked on some things and it was going, it was talking to Jill, I was talking to Shadrill. It's like, then how do you watch somebody watching the, it's, you know, it's like, if you're watching a live stream, you're watching somebody watching a game being played. I, we need, we can go deeper. So it was like, man, right? it's, it's, my top? It, it, it's a game in the same way that, I don't know, if you're watching a streamer play a video game, you can say that if you played that video game. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, these games are very popular. Uh, especially on Android, because they require minimal input. It's like, ooh, I want this character and this character, and this character has higher numbers than that character, so I'm going to swap that out. And then you go, it's like, okay, fight. Did I win? Let cool. Did fight. I lose? Okay. I gotta guess I got to go back and change a character there. Hmm. But yeah, it's all automatic. 
Isn't that right? Ooh, I've, app I've apparently <laughs> gone full Bigfoot. Nope. I, don't... I love it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just too obscene for you people. I'm completely blurred out. Why did you spew uh, Vaseline I, 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 on your camera? Again. I could use some ray tracing. You I could use some RTX ray tracing. on. Uh, yep. Speaking of that, man, there is an update. 110 for Quake 2 RTX uh, available on Linux, which it's like, hey, good on you, NVIDIA. You actually did it. And plus, you get the added benefit, well, WTF benefit of seeing Bethesda on your damn screen. Uh, two big things. They One I was curious about. Uh, I want to pick your brains on that. But one of the big things is the install script now works with uh, directories of spaces. Because if you want to install the full Quake 2, you can point it at a directory and install it. And you can even have the, as long as it's installed somewhere. But if you had spaces, it figured that out. But here's what I want to the, the, the the one that really threw me off. They added the ability to invert your cursor. Who, what evil does this? There are, there are, there are console players. Console players. Uh, yeah, they're, not they're, just they're, console they're, players. I knew someone who actively inverted both horizontal and vertical mouse movement on all the games that they played. Okay, well, oh, no, 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 it's a great ploy. It's a great ploy <laughs> if you want people to not to be able to use your computer, because then they'll be like, what the fuck is happening? Dude, I mean, <laughs> this is like almost as bad as people who passively do it. Right. They also uh, made a couple of modifications to like the menu screen, which I'm kind of glad they did because that was 1999 confusing as hell. It's like, yeah, that's not where you would expect it to be. So they moved a few things around. But don't worry, if you have a 10 series card, it still runs at the speed of smell. Yep. 24 it, it, it frames still runs a second. Like yeah, <laughs> not even 24, like 14. And on, my, uh, on my fire breathing 2060, I can still crush 35 to 37 at 1080p yeah. on medium. <laughs> Um, that's, that, 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 that's, that's the OG quick experience, right? Oh, fuck no. It yeah. was running way better. I had 3D effects acceleration back in the day. So oh. Software rendering. 1024, 768, baby. It was butter. It was butter. Oh, man. Actually, actually, we, I, should, I should try it at 1024 by 768 on the 10 series. See? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what do we got up next? Zero Siege. Siege. Yes. There's a, a new beta update. Uh, version 150. There's uh, They say it's more fixes. And, uh, well, <laughs> they uh, introduced a bit of padding to one of the uh, second phases of a given boss. Never got to that particular boss, so I don't know. Uh, the, they approved enemy animations, so they actually look the right way when they're moving. And they fixed uh, a bunch of uh, issues with the game itself. Uh, like, teeny tiny little stuff, like random messages showing up on screen or certain numbers showing up on screen when they shouldn't be. They fixed all of that and um, they introduced a couple of new things and they improved the chainsaw damage or sorry, no, the chainsaw massacre hitbox. There it is. <laughs> oh, and you know what? It's got online multiplayer so yeah, that's definitely It does. Didn't they uh, send us copies? Of this? Don't we have copies of this? I think we have this it's game. In, or, or it's in like a bundle I or do. something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something but like uh, recently, for some reason, apparently the developers did something, and the um, the uh, reviews on Steam went from positive to neutral. It's still a high neutral, it's like 68%, but apparently the developers did something that a lot of players didn't like. Hmm. So I don't I, I I don't I don't know they hmm. they have they have that little disclaimer on the system requirements. This hipster pixel game will not work with your Intel HD four thousand. It's two weeks. It's two weeks. <laughs> it's two weeks. <laughs> ah. Amen. Some people they get it just like it plays perfectly acceptable at eight hundred by six hundred at ten frames a second. Like it's fine. I don't I don't know for like a hipster pixel game though. I would expect that like it can run on any GPU. Man, like, I'm from the Intel future. I want to uh, listen. Graphic, I want yeah. running a Vulcan baby. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it might happen. Live long One game well, that's not running on Vulcan is Vambrace. I got an update. Version 108 is live or dead because there are monsters and undead things and uh, Vam Vambrace. And Anyways, furries. It, well, ob obviously, people bought. <laughs> that's like the main selling point of this game. It's like, you like Darkest Dungeon? You want furries? Th a this is a furry, and this looks like a furry predator. And I'm not hating. I'm just going to say what it, I'm just saying what <laughs> it looks like. It needs more plasma cannon, <laughs> right? Uh, any, anyways, uh, they added uh, some adjustable difficulty stuff. They have a new. They have a new thing for recruits now, where one of the skills will be random, so not all of the uh, 
recruits from various classes will be the same. So gives you a bit of an incentive to try and keep your dudes alive. Uh, they had a flourish system where uh, you can use some of the special abilities. Oh my God, that's terrifying. <laughs> that reminds me of Jim. <laughs> Yeah, yeah there's, Sailor there's, there's def- lyrics. Yeah, there, there's, there's definitely some magical girl <laughs> shit going on. Uh, they also have a monster type system. So this updates the rock paper scissors mechanics of monsters, so that certain types of monsters are weak against certain types of attacks. So you got to strategize like that. Um, and the, I mean, it's all very interesting updates. I kind of, I kind of wish they would add a mode that adds a little bit more of the darkest dungeony depth to it. Because again, the game is a little too simple for my tastes. I mean, we threw chairs at. It. If you want to learn all about it, you can go track down that episode. Well, that's and, definitely like, a thing. Um, do you think it's a good idea, Pedro, that they've added a difficulty slider to it? Because I, I didn't. Okay, when we played it, apparently, like twenty seconds before we all collectively played it, it was fuck you hard. Oh yeah, it, it, I played it before they they released the first patch, and it was hard. Like the stream, if you go back and watch the stream I did uh, on Tuesday when they released the game, that was on the original difficulty. That's why I was always running, you know, into like, oh, I have reached like maximum thing, and now all the ghosts are stupid hard. Uh, yeah, they changed that because. Yeah, because people were saying, yeah, so this story you're trying to tell, we can't follow it because the game is too hard. So they reverted back. And then other people were saying, but I was having fun. It was hard. It was making me work for the story. It's like, and I, you know what? Fuck it. You can have both. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, pe- people get a lot get kind of pissy about difficulty sliders. I don't, I don't think that's a problem, right? If, you're, if, you, if you buy the game, you should be able to play it the way you want to, right? Yes. Like, that... That 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 seems like a rational standpoint, not oh you have to suffer through this hard fucking. Game. Listen, I people play games for different reasons, right? You're, you're not a real gamer. Like, just there are a bunch of elitist Dude. freaks out All there. Right. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's talk, let's talk about N N A A N N E. It's an early access. Uh, it's by Games Brio Inc. or Games by Mo, not Game Brio. Um, it's actually <laughs> it's actually funded by a Canadian tax program for the arts. Um. And it shows, because look at that gorgeous pixel art. Like, the foreground stuff kind of looks like crappy, blocky Mega Man stuff, but the backgrounds look really, really cool. Look at There's, like, a scorpion boss. Looks like a spider slayer from, like, the 90s Spider-Man cartoons. It's pretty fucking sick. Um, it's a bit of a hybrid platformer side-scrolling shoot-em-up. Seems kind of interesting, and... Um, yeah, it's, it's available in Early Access. Supports the Linuxes. Um, actually, it's not a... It's not available. They're planning to release it sometime in June 2019, which they got a week left of that. <laughs> we'll see how we'll They're see how that goes. Bread. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It's a yeah. shmup that gives you the option to lose the ship and actually, you know, go exploring with your character. I like that. Uh oh. Currently, on the <laughs> Linux box. Oh, it ran out of bits. Uh. Oh no! <laughs> they, they they need to send it back to the genius at the Linux store. Oh man! <laughs> uh, he broke his Linux box. Good job. <laughs> uh, well, well. On the bright side, now he gets to reinstall something that isn't Ubuntu. Right. All right. All right. Uh, one last before we're out of the steamy side. Is is, is <clears> Landers? <throat> yeah. Uh, it is a game uh, where you build cities on an island, um, and you have to sort of make the best of what you can with a constrained space. And they have an update uh, that got released on the nineteenth that supports both Mac and Linux. So now, if you um. Wanted to pl- if you were interested in this game and you thought, man, this would be great. I don't want to run in Proton because I have my p- standards and principles. And if you don't like them, I got other ones to sell you. What is uh, this? City, then, cities pixels? Pretty much. Just, the city, eh, polygons, cities just not so much with the pixels. The city yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on, honestly, it's it's something for like the city skylines crowd. And they got Control Z support now, so you can undo shit. <laughs> um, but r- really, this is nice because it, 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 it's 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 good to see developers add Linux support as opposed to abandoning it bloodstained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All and right. it is just a city builder from um, the videos I could watch. It's just, oh, you're just literally building cities. No, there's nothing else involved. You just wait for money to generate. Motherfucker, and you build listen, new it, things. It's pr- for $4.99. <laughs> I mean, if it launches, you're doing good. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not against well, that, man. But, yeah. you know, city simulation things. Uh, I'm sc- the, the- Dude. All right. Ra- raise your hand if you own City Skylines. I think I do, but that, I haven't installed it. Okay. That's just one of those things. Raise I, your I hand if you haven't bought it because 
you don't think you're responsible enough to play it. <laughs> I haven't bought it because I don't like it. Yeah, like, yeah, so the, the city building <laughs> stuff definitely appeals to a certain subset of Raise gamers. Raise if you have an irrational hatred for video game cities. That's you, Pedro. I like some of them. Oh. <laughs> I you, like Kaiser 3. Nope. Uh, I, 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 I hate all cities. City Real cities, taste. digital cities. I am city a city... I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. Coming up next... Oh my god, you can find out about new hardware by reading the Linux kernel source code. Who, who would have thought <sighs> that? If you'd like to partake in this little bit of insanity that we create on uh, Saturday nights, I guess. I mean, it's, you know, Sunday morning for me, but you can. It's, you it's can. whatever day it is in your heart, man. I'm, I mean, I mean, really, it's whatever day it is that you, the audience, are listening to this on. Also, That's yes. what day it is. Possibly. Unless so it's, it's cheap day. <laughs> sure. If you, if, if, and I can if just you, eat you, whatever I want. <laughs> if you if you if you want to cheat on your calendar or your spouse, you can head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh and we, we we will we will be your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, partner, whatever you want. As long as you're paying money, we'll do it for you. Uh, you can get you can get access to cool stuff like access to our uh, Discord channel, uh, early show note access. You can get your name in the freaking cre credits when we do the Star Wars thing, and we can read your name out. Maybe Starfight. sort of. We, we got a new thing yet. Pedro hasn't even agreed to it, but I'm going to force him to do it. If, if, for any new Patreon, we get uh, Pedro has to come up with it. Not just one fact; he has to come up with a fact for you on Saturday and on Wednesday. Oh, you're, you're going to learn facts. not one but two new things about yourself guaranteed <laughs> so so pedro pedro is going to open up his pedro file and pull out some facts cool um youtube censorship is going to have a field day with this one <laughs> but thanks right. to you we don't have to worry about that exactly uh but if, if you if you want some if you want some other cool ways to uh have... show some support uh we, we got we got a we got a store we can what? sell you things did, did i bitch can you read <laughs> I, I, I talked about I talked about the Patreon. I, I literally just said go to Patreon and talked about all the cool stuff that you could get, like show note access or Discord access, or you can watch videos of Ven teaching you how to edit how to edit other videos under Linux. It's true. <laughs> Hello. You can you you it, it's for the ultimate mayonnaise enthusiasts. Right. Um, but yeah, head on over to uh, store.linuxgamecast.com. Buy yourself some goddamn t-shirts you can put my face on your chest if you feel like advertising to the world that yes you know jordan spung and you like him enough to put him on your chest or again broadcast your mayonnaise enthusiasm you know what you, 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 your fire deserve marketer <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can i get hired as a pen though maybe all right i, I mean i'll look i'll, I'll look over your cv <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we we also we also got a thing on Amazon. If you ever wonder how what kind of hardware and oh, whatnot shit, we used yeah, to, we got like two different things. We got like one for the stuff that we plan on buying. Yes, which is kind of boring. But you guys have like wish list. Uh, we got studio stuff. Uh, if you want to enable like Game Shark cheat mode, but there's nothing heavy on there at this point, so you might not be interested. Except I, for that case. Shut up. <laughs> I don't need to be injured by any more products, but um, you guys actually have. Um, you say that. It's kind of serious, man. Your own little wish zones, which uh, you can spread the love and the cheer. And Jordan, you picked up something this week. Yeah. Um, my, Mike G, once again, is trying to. <laughs> own all the stuff that we use and he uh he sent me he sent me a writer off my uh my witch zone he gave me a little note oh you have he to said, read that haha -ha. I, I i do have to read this and it's it's very sweet mike g i i'm really appreciative of it and he says does it start off with like of you some of the... <laughs> no I, I i'm i'm a little i'm a little sad this like this, this is kind of sweet he says in spite of some of the silly things i've said about you i can't imagine Luke's game gamecast weekly being the same without you enjoy from michel so he gets to go on the fuck wall for get the what the fourteenth time now, possibly fifteenth, possibly. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. But hey, you Jordan, know, if you, if you, can I ask you a serious question though? What? What's up? What do you like? Honestly, think the show would be like without you? I don't know. Actually, pro pro probably a little less over the top jokey, less dick jokes. I mean, yeah. 
But, I mean, yeah. sure, okay. Uh, do you think it would still have the same sense of humor? Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Right on. Right on. Honestly, it, de- it depends on if you were sticking with like two people or if you went to like three people. Changes up the dynamic. Uh huh. Okay. Indeed. I won't be seeing you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's, oh, let's, let's, man. Let's... Thanks for keeping us loud, live, and independent people. You, you make all this possible. You're awesome. <laughs> Seriously, we do yeah. mean that. But let's get into this nonsense. Indeed, and we don't have drivers to start off the news, but we do have a little bit of sauce that uh, AMD have provided to the Linux kernel to enable the uh, up-and-coming Radeon RX. Damn it, uh, I read that as Rodna, and I was like, what's it going on? Rodney, get get the zero-point module. No. Yeah, to enable the new RX uh, 5700 and the 5700 XT, and basically Tom's hardware went, oh, uh, they're publishing code to enable new hardware. If we have a look at that, we can actually figure out some of the specs. Let's do that. And so they wrote an article on it. It, There's a little bit of speculation still going on. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, And, you know... Everything, all things considered, with Vega and now Navi, uh, they certainly show a much different AMD, especially when it comes to handling the open source drivers. Uh, and I, 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 I wonder, I wonder though, does so something something tells me in the back of my mind that a thing that rhymes with Schmoogle and Cradia had a little, little, little bit to do with that. Just, just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> uh, and, the, you know, hopefully Mesa will do a better job with Navi than it did with um, Vega when that was first released, because that didn't work so well. Shut up, uh, Pedro. So hopefully on AMD, you're a show for NVIDIA. <laughs> I won't stand for this. I, I, so, I mean, I mean, like, as... as Ryzen as, 1600. As, as the person here with the most AMD video cards at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Team Intel needs to chime in. Give, give him the floor. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I mean I got I got the Arcs 580. I got the Vega 10. I, I I got I got my fair share. I spread I spread the love all You're over. You're just an AMD apologist. I no, I'm Team a Cyrix Green. apologist. Oh, right. I'm a Cyrix apologist, motherfucker. Womp, womp. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, but th- I mean, this is one way to get Windbros on the next hype train. It's like, oh, if we actually like read through kernel code, we can find out if like new <laughs> video cards are coming out. All we need now is to, like get them start fixing some bugs, and it'll be perfect. <laughs> don't, don't expect such high things from casuals. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery Navi codes. I mean, this is going to be interesting to see how this rolls out. I don't think we are going to be seeing um, much in the way. I mean, NVIDIA is already, we, we've seen what NVIDIA's response is. They're like, ah, all right, we're just going to release the super things for asking. And mm-hmm. no yeah. one in their right mind, unless you just need the open source goodness, which I don't blame you for. If you don't need the NVIDIA encode stuff, go for it. Do yourself a favor. And you don't mining some Bitcoin need the fastest. Well, we don't have to deal with that anymore, man. Um, do you, do you think we'll see like some definitely like lower powered stuff, or do you think like the next gen of Navi is uh, it's going to be almost going to be competitive with Nvidia's top end? I, I like I I think Not I think the the, top, the, 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 the general the 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 general um hope is that it will because Nvidia needs some fucking competition. Let's be real. Um. The 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 fifty seven hundred and the fifty seven hundred XT are supposed to be competing in like the twenty sixty space. Mm-hmm. So they're they're saying that like the the big boy, their like high end prosumer shit will be coming out later in the year. So we're gonna actually have to see how it will actually stack up. Um, but they're they're they're, they're touting a, a lot better Vulcan performance, which is something that a lot of Linux users yeah. are. That's what I want to see. All about. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, I'm totally not doing this to pad out the news segment, but I do. We don't get a chance to didn't get a chance to discuss this earlier. You saw that earlier this week. The rumor mills spinning around that Intel's actually going to do a price cut. They're going to swallow the pride. Yeah. The, mm. Supposedly, the they're knee. going to drop their uh, processor prices to fifteen percent. So yeah, the, the, it's a significant chunk of cash, especially when you're talking about like the. X and the XE versions of uh, the high-end CPUs, Mm -hmm. it's still not going to be anywhere near what you're paying for, say, the 3950X, which AMD has announced will be a 16-core 32-bit. The Geekbench score with the 8-core 16-thread port? 
that was the 3800X. 3800X. I yeah. looked at that and I was like, oh, I'm curious because I have a 1920X Threadripper here for a production box. I was like, oh, let me run. That thing, and I say this like impressive wise, was within 10,000 point multi-thread performance. And it, yeah, no, uh, the, if the Ryzen 3 uh, numbers actually hold up when they are released. If that chip with holds all up of the on leaks, that GIMP uh, memory, the it is very yeah. close to the 9900K. And that, here, here's the thing, that's not even their top end part. No, and th <laughs> that memory, that test, uh, the memory was running at t uh, 2133. Mm -hmm. So oh, if yeah. you're increasing the memory to like 3000 or 3200, like everyone else does. Right. That's going to rise a little bit. It's going to be rising. And one more thing. Yeah. Ah, I see what you're what I'm looking to tie it back into video cards, because we're seeing for the first time in a long time, actual competition in the CPU market. We're going to see Intel going, oh, we, we can't charge oh. extra hyper thread. Oh, Shucks, guys, that was fun. I mean, we can't, we can't fucking use hyperthreading anymore, oh, man. Yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's got Spectre on it. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, though. I'm hoping we will see this in the... We, we will see Intel do this to NVIDIA in the discrete GPU segment next year. Maybe. But that would Stay be tuned. interesting. Ta-da. We're, def we're definitely going to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Now, for, for the elephant in the room, the 64-bit elephant. Uh, there was an announcement earlier this week that made all of the internet excited about the future that is 64-bit. And that's a fucking lie, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, Canonical announced i386 architecture will be dropped starting with 1910. That's going to be a thing. And we're not talking, it's like, well, you couldn't get a 32-bit disk. No, no, no. We're, we're talking about... This is going to be straight up multi-arch, so like your wine, steam, stuff like that, it's not going to work out of the box. And you're wondering, well, like, but they got a solution in place, right? Uh, does a shrug emoji count? Uh, count as a, <laughs> yeah. The, well, they, 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 call, they call it out in the article. It's like, well, if you need 32-bit, you can continue to use 1804 until it loses its support. Well, listen, man, uh, there are a number of ways 32-bit applications can continue to be made available, but... You know, have fun figuring those out. Right. They, 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 a, a, a couple of the recommendations floating around are just run it in like an LXC or a dock container running running 1804. Well, you know, or, in or preparation use a package. for this, uh, Popey, during his lunch break, uh, he's like, well, may maybe I should see how bad this is going to be. And it's pretty bad. Uh, what didn't run? Pretty much fucking everything. Pedro, you joined in on the fun on this, too. Yeah, I did. And uh, one of the games I tested was um, FTL, basically to prove his thing because he was testing in VirtualBox. So that's not ideal. And I tested FTL and FTL actually works with the exact same settings that he was talking about. Now, he was testing a couple of wine games from um, GOG. And basically, that thir uh, that uh, Windows installer that GOG ships with all of their games, that's 32-bit. None of that is going to work. Uh, I also tried Flatout since it comes with its own version of Wine and a bunch of libraries already packed in. Uh, so if anything was going to work, it would be that. Mm. That doesn't work either. It, the only it, thing it, tur it, tur it turns out that if you if you want to run 32-bit code on a Linux system, you kind of need that 32-bit libc, right? You yeah. do. Yeah. So I, I, I <laughs> definitely got to sit back in. You know, I, I tapped on this and even get a little bit of blowback for it, uh, even on Wednesday, because, you know, I got to play the Flying Spaghetti Monsters advocate and saying, you know, something like this is going to have to take place eventually in the future and somebody's got to be the first up they, they got to take that first wave of bullets to get things moving jordan they do <laughs> a, a, a little bit I, I would say like that would be more of an issue when we start moving to like x86 128 or whatever like the next crazy architecture is um but and like to, to be honest, um, for a lot of Unity titles um, that are running like nat natively under Linux, Unity by default, if you just click export, it produces a 32-bit and 64-bit binary. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Unity games will be fine. Um, but a lot of uh, ga games that are using like custom engines, um, Unreal Engine 3 games that are like games pretty that are more than three years old. Yeah, exactly. Ex <laughs> exactly. Like that. That's that's gonna be where there's gonna be a lot of uh, there's gonna be a lot of friction, uh, and. The, the thing is, like, it's going to be a hard ask to go ask devs, some of whom may have just aban straight up abandoned mm -hmm. their games. Hey, can you go back and produce a 64-bit build of this? You're going to be like, fuck no, man. Yeah, you're going to pay me? I yeah. mean, uh, 
That, yeah. That's going to be a terribly unfortunate thing. I, you know, I, Pedro, you got a little bit on here, but I, I do want to say, what do we think? And, you know, we're just randos on the internet talking about like the outside reaction. A lot of people, including Valve, was like, like well, what's <laughs> Valve going to do? And like, uh, Fuck off. That's what Valve's going to do. Yeah. And we were following yeah. the uh, wine development list. There'll be a link in the show notes. All this is in the show notes for anything that we're citing. Uh, and this is to what I'll say that it will encourage movement because, was, well, you know, in two years, we're going to be dropping. There would have been no movement until like three days before that two years is up. The wine mailing list is like, shit, we got to figure something out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that that entire thread that you posted a link to is very much worth reading because they actually go into okay. So at one point, uh, there was a suggestion early on to make Wine sixty four support thirty two bit apps, uh, but the way that uh, thunking happens in um, in Wine is different than what it happens on Windows, obviously. Uh, and it turned out to be much easier to have Wine32 and Wine64 be two completely separate things and both handle their own uh, respective architectures. And it's not going to be feasible for the Wine project to introduce that, at least not in the time frame that Canonical has set up, unfortunately, because they decided, you know what, let's make this with 1910 right now this is kind of i think the issue you know at the end of the day it's not that people are you know everyone's a little upset about losing the multi-arch but it was that this was dropped genuinely out of the fuck mothering sky it's like wait yeah. what oh like w- w- when's this oh tomorrow effectively you know get what i'm saying and and go ahead go, sweetheart go, go, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> i mean i the, Multi multi arch has been like a, a fairly graceful solution for the foreseeable past, and it seems to be working for the foreseeable future, right? Um, I, I mentioned Fedora earlier in the Steam segment, right? They they phased out thirty two bit in such a way that you know you can still actually use thirty two bit applications because there are a fucking ton of them. Moon magic, still around. wizards, yeah. burn them, right? <laughs> and and still not have to support, and and still have support available, but primarily community support for those legacy thirty two bit users, um. And like Katana mentions in the show notes, you know, if you're a Patreon, you can leave us little notes and have your say in our show notes. You can talk shit about us and tell us we're wrong before we say anything. You you, you straight up can. Um, Yeah, non-Ubuntu distributions will still exist. Debian is still going to be marching forward with Mm 32-bit, and that's what Valve is basing their shit on. Debian isn't going anywhere. (laughs) Yeah, so so it's 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 not like Valve is freaking out. They're just like, well, shit. That was a popular, reasonably popular distribution with a decently sized community that we could point people towards if they want to start playing on Linux. Mm-hmm. Now we, now we're going to have to take things into our own hands. And you know, you know how much Valve loves responsibility. They, they. This, this is one of the things. A, go ahead and get your Hannah Montana ISO downloaded and get it running. But no, you can that's mo- Ubuntu based, isn't it? Hey, baby, don't judge. Um, <laughs> we know it works in Solus, Fedora. Ever, come on over the yep. water's fine. You can bounce anywhere you need to do, but. I want to see a little bit of an unsolicited. I will, give me your feedback on this because I've seen yeah. the defense. The only people defending this are canonical employees that I've seen. And yes, some right. of them, I think, because they have to, not, you know, they're like, shit, or what? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. They, they, Sh- Shuttleworth is like standing behind them with a potted plant ready, waiting to smash right. it on their head. They, uh... He's got a speed brake ready for them. Um, and that's but, the hey, thing. That's... Motherfucker, I'm going to finish okay, this. Okay. Go ahead. See? Good boy. <laughs> uh, the argument I've seen brought up more than once is that maintaining this, which is true, and it's like, well, this requires a lot of time and resources. And that's why it's just not viable continuing on doing that, to which, I'm like, but Solus is like, kind of like running like we run on donations and uh, community support yeah. and so teeny tiny team yeah small mm-hmm. team and they can do it so when you frame it like that everyone's immediate thought is and this is unsolicited advice but this is looking at is like how bad a shape is the company in if they can't afford what these smaller teams can do and on top uh, of the, that, the, 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 Solus still actually from... started, Sol- Solus, when it first started, it was going to be purely 64-bit. Mm-hmm. And about two months in, Ike realized, that oh, don't shit, work. I right. can't well, so, actually do this. <laughs> I, I, I brought this up in the previous Super Chosen. We've seen a couple attempts before to move to pure 64-bit, and that just yep. didn't work. Mm-hmm. Itanium is the big example, right? It turns Itanic. out that, yeah. 
people people still need 32 bit support even though most if you buy a new computer it's 64 bit by default odds are all the software that you're going to have installed is 64 bit but when you're talking about games which are very long lived applications that don't see a lot of updates over time mm-hmm. you you realize that hey some something's going to have to give if you want to continue to use the software um i, I put in the show notes you want you want people using 1804 till the heat death of the universe this is how you get people using 1804 this is going to be a very real universe, thing but, i mean cuz this is yeah. going to um i've run fedora on a main box but our two satellite boxes that you guys are on in our main audio um encoding box is all 1804 and fortunately it's not going to hit me i had to go and audit everything on jackbox because it's using several vsc plugins and i was like are any of these 32 bit they very likely could be and more importantly a lot of audio music production and audio production is done with wine asio which uses allows people to use windows 32 bit plugins you're never going to get the fucking source words never going to be built for 64 bit and that can break that chain so i'm gonna to have to be looking for something else on top of that yay yeah, yeah so it, it's 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 a big old fuster clock stay tuned for more news about this <laughs> I, I i i wonder i wonder if this is going to be like a mirror situation where they spend a good number of years saying this is what we're doing this is what we're doing what this is what we're doing oh now we realize that everyone hates it let's let's roll back our decision well you know ah, don't worry when they bring up the ipo again this will get dropped you can look at it like this i've already seen uh <laughs> My canonical employee is like, well, this is not set in stone just yet. And I was like, there's, there's no taxi backsies for this move. No, there, <laughs> yeah. no company. You, you. See, I'm going to finish this thought. And it's not the move itself. It's how it was dropped out of nowhere. Anybody who is dealing with that, it's like, yeah, that could happen again. So no, mm-hmm. that's, I'm sure that was pretty much the driving force behind valve going that could happen again. We need to go somewhere because that that's bad decision making hundred percent. Um, but well, the, it's, as we were talking about in the pre pre super shows, uh, is it's not going to be the end of the world. We're going to have PPAs. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and it's, you're it's, always it's great to have other distros. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's Linux, man. It's one of the beautiful things about it. Okay, indeed. So speaking of crazy people, but they, these people are good crazy scum VM. Mm-hmm. They've been the guys getting all those old adventure point and click games running on well, basically everything, um, except for um, unless your unless your name is Mist, in which case apparently scum doesn't work on Linux or Mac, just Windows. But anyways, um, they uh, they are adding support for Blade Runner, the point and click adventure game based on the movie film based on the Philip K. Dick novel. And uh, they are about to uh, make this a primetime thing. It's going to be in GA and they want some last minute testing. They have, uh, they have two things they want you to test though. Um, what they really want feedback for is just the vanilla version of Blade Runner. So if you have the game files, drop them into the scum VM directory, play it. Everything should work. They're just doing some last minute checks to see if there's some, I don't know, regional weirdness. Maybe if they're just using Brazilian Portuguese and, Fonts don't render properly. They, they need to fix it. <laughs> uh, there's all. There's also the Blade Runner with the restored content, which is we we don't know what it is, but they say if you're going to be testing this one and you're going to file a bug report, make sure you indicate which one because one is completely busted and one is not. So has um, this been like some type of holy grail on the Scum VM or something? Is like something that has never worked or? Um, I, I went, I went into their wiki. They, they were, ha- they were having some issues. I think this is just, they're, they're finally getting around to this. Ah, got it. Got it. All yeah. Right. Cause and like, it doesn't, it, have... it, it, it doesn't actually just do like the scum, the manic mansion engine. It does a fucking other ton of uh, engine implementations as well. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for Blade Runner specifically, they have uh, two different versions that you can get the game working. Yes. One is the original one, and the other is the uh, all Restart the improvements. Content. Yeah, which uh, they say it's very not stable. So that's what, uh, it's, what, it's what it's what I just said, Pedro. Literally yes. what I just said. <laughs> yes, Jordan, uh, but uh, most people tone you out. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I know I do. And also. Uh, <laughs> And Katana in the in the comments is like, oh, uh, so translators are needed. It's like, no, they say transcribers. Nope, transcribers. transcribers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with transcribers, it's like, uh, I did shoot up an email and they said, yes, we need transcribers. Just people, like Jordan said, to write down the uh, subtitles. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm looking forward to uh, Blade Runner starting with sub bitches or Kenichi bitches. <laughs> oh no no! Let, 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 let's see if you can sneak in the entire script of Pulp Fiction in there. Oh fuck yeah! Let's do it. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> be good. 
I kept this replica up my no. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, let's talk about Final Fantasy. Last but not least, uh, open source uh, V3 engine V5, 6, 8, 7. Uh, 7. Uh, eight, engine eight. implementation. C Sharp <laughs> running on Windows and Linux. Android and iOS is plan too. It's an open source, uh, complete Final Fantasy 8. Mm-hmm. Yep. Eight game engine rewrite from scratch, powered in OpenGL, making it possible to play vanilla game on a wide. W- all right, you want to? <laughs> what? Why? Why? Because apparently, <laughs> apparently, the developers are actually vampires, dude. Um, <laughs> that's a wide the, variety. <laughs> uh, they walk through with well, the engine. Uh, uh, is uh, it legal uh, and all that? Which it is. You could reverse engineer that, and it's getting uh, close to a playable. Well, it's playable-ish state. I mean, mm-hmm. hey. I don't know. I mean, personally, I've never played a Final Fantasy game. I plan on keeping it that way. I barely know what the hell it is, but this is still a neat project, and I know a lot of people would be interested in it. So I thought it'd be like, Psst, hey, listen. Yeah, it would, it would be it would be neat too if they <laughs> Pedro like, has his hand something. Up. No, all right, yeah, all right. no, because I am share totally with, one with of the, the people. I am totally one of the people who is very interested in this because you've seen me play Final Fantasy VIII, uh, the Steam version, on uh, one of my Tuesday streams. And the music on that one is horrible, so I hope they they can find a way for people to then import, say, the PlayStation version um, of the uh, the background music and improve the graphics, uh, make it much easier to say if you're running the game on Linux to load mods in because loading them over Proton doesn't work so well. And yeah, it's I like Final Fantasy VIII. It, it will warrant a full playthrough once this is done. It would be very, very nice. Hmm. What, what's what's interesting is I'm curious what the level of engine overlap is for something like Final Fantasy VIII for Final Fantasy VII and IX. Because it would be cool if this project could run all like the old Final Fantasy play or PlayStation Final Fantasies. <laughs> Mind you, I, I th- think they picked the wrong one to start porting. Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII is one of the more contrived Final Fantasies. Dude, right. But it does appeal to teenage edge lords like Pedro. Oh, so come. I'm the hell on this, like showing your router on the internet. Right. <laughs> I, I I don't have the router in this room. I can show you a switch though. Hot. As we as we switch on to the next segment, where we're throwing chairs at Zero G Arena with its millions and millions of players. Zero Garena. Oh. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Fedorfa. Then, and only then, can the question be asked. It's fun. This week, we're taking a look at Zero-G Arena, developed by Jonathan Wood on the Unreal Engine 4, because it didn't feel like a Unity game. Nope. Uh, we got to thank Massive Oni for sending us some copies of this. It was good on him for that. Uh, what is, you can pick it up for about 10 bucks. Uh, and what is it? Zero G Arena is an arena shooter with zero gravity. Surprise. Ragdoll physics, grappling beams, and magneto boots. Um, <laughs> well, I guess let's let's get started then. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I get it. I'm digging you guys. You... <laughs> in, all, all, all right. Well, 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 well Ben is performing ego. his perfectly. Yeah. Well, 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 he's performing his perfectly cromulent action. I'll continue to pad. Until I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't Jeez, know. Jeez, Jordan, would you just give it a rest? You talk too much, man. Just let me get to my point. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does it run over here on uh, Fedora 30 on the Threadripper 1920x, 32 gigajoules RAM, NVMEs, all the fun stuff, powered by 2060? Uh, runs like stink. That's a good thing. That means it's fast. Everything works. I mean, if you don't do something crazy. I have a multi-monitor situation, and uh, if you do something like go into full screen, go ahead, try it. It kind of flips out, and you kind of have to hit none, because where your cursor is is about halfway across the screen from where it actually activates. So once I was able to get it back into a window mode, everything worked out of the box. I did 1080 at 60, easy, not a problem. No issues there. No glitches uh, graphically, but there's really not much to glitch. If you take a look at it, it's not saying it's fuggly. It's just a little bit limited. And my controls uh, was out of the box, plus a introduction to the E button. So uh, outside of having to spend a good five minutes bullshitting my way back through the menu to get it in window mode, uh, everything works. So solid four. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30 64-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. Uh, yeah, full full screen networky. I didn't have that issue that Ven had. I got a separate one where 
Uh, if you go to full screen, the game proper is in a 640 by 480 window in the oh, corner. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> yeah, and you you can't you can't do anything. So I alt F forward. I'm like, man, I really hope it didn't save that setting. It did not. So I was able to just play it in windowed mode. Uh, yeah, and I mean, let, let's let's be real. It's really easy to find servers uh, for this game when no one else is playing, which makes getting into a multiplayer match really, really easy. Uh, performance at 1080, no problems. It runs at 60, no real issues. Um, graphics, gra- black floor. You can grapple it. White floor, don't. Um, that's 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 about it. Um, some of the levels are kind of huge, though. Um, so some, and your, your, your characters are predom- predominantly, predominantly white. So <laughs> sometimes it's a little difficult to see, uh, your white opponent against the white background, hashtag racism, um, control wise. Yeah. You, you, you was right click to grapple and that, that, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you hit, you hit R to switch weapons. Scroll wheel doesn't work, which was a bit of an adjustment. Yeah. That's, but, bullshit. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, that's um, I want to reload. Not, not, oh, wait, I don't need to. Oh, why yeah. am I shooting a different gun now? <laughs> yeah, that, that, like, like, it's not enough to be in a chair, but it's like, come on, man, we got, we got twenty fucking years of established mm-hmm. FPS conventions. Mm-hmm. Don't don't try and deviate unless you got a really good idea. Good idea. This was not. So I'll give it three. Pedro. Yep. And over here on Solus, uh, out of the box, it fails to launch because uh, since it fails to set the open file limit to unlimited. Uh, it uh, throws a bit of a hissy fit and says, no, now I'm not going to work. And if you want to skip this, you can just pass the no core flag, which is what I did. And then it works just fine. Uh, the If you, yeah, like uh, Ven and Jordan already mentioned, full screen has issues, but full screen borderless actually works. So if for I, some I, reason I, you decide to pick this up, play it like that. <laughs> I, I I did like in the in the in the in the settings screen though they actually on next to the full screen they're like known to cause issues yeah uh, <laughs> but that's what I look for in my video games <laughs> yeah right. and the uh, the performance at uh, 1080 yeah they have an FPS cap and I was uh, looking at their counter at the Steam uh, overlay counter and it was exactly the same value so good job on them there and I didn't see any fluctuations at 1080p. Even with the graphics and everything up to 11, uh, until I set the FPS cap to 400, that's when I started to see like some 300 somethings uh, floating around. So, very good performance. Graphics, yeah, no issues that I could find except for the god rays and the lighting effects, but that's default UA4 uh, graphical settings. So, yeah. The controls. Uh, you can re- remap everything, and by default, you, if you play like me with the directional arrows, you're, you're going to have to set those because they're not set out of the box. But one thing I noticed while I was doing that is the controls, every single action is mapped to gamepad left. It gets around. <laughs> so, yeah, the, I'm not going to dig in a chair because, again, you can remap everything, but yeah, three chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. It kind of works. Just don't stick it in windowed mode. Or you're going to run into some problems as the checkbox. <laughs> True suggests. story. Uh, what, what, was, was, was it fun, though? Is it fun? Is it amazing? Uh, this is our opinions, and here's mine, man. Um, you know, I honestly lost track. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Oh, I think it was you who tracked down who sent it to us, right? Or was it Pedro? Yeah, it was uh, Massaboni. No, yeah. that was Jordan. All right. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that was me. So, thanks, Pedro. Uh, it was me. Because, <laughs> you know... Damn! It's been a minute since, I mean, it turns out it was in 2019, I think it was like 2018. I wanted to see if this game ever managed to like develop a community before we went and took a look at it, a proper look. So we've got to set it to the side. It didn't. Um, that's a damn shame. Since, you know what? A lot of fun to be had uh, with this little mechanic going on. As you're looking at this, you're like, oh, it's ragdoll bullshit. Phys-. Yeah, but it's got a fun ragdoll bullshit physics, man, especially if you're playing with somebody. It makes you feel like you're in control. Yeah. I <laughs> no, mean, it doesn't. You know, <laughs> at, at first, you know, it's just straight up ragdoll, pew pew and all that. But, you know, once you kind of learn the maps and if, if you get a plane forever alone mode, once I realized that you could turn the AI above, like a few notches above potato, it's a little bit challenging, mm-hmm. a little bit default. For those poor bots is to stand there and like, you know, lick the floor. I mean, there's not much to it. Uh, however, at the end of the day, what we have is a first person shooter with grav boots and a grappling hook, nothing new, uh, filled with programmer art and sound effects. So that kind of comes across as not quite fully 
baked. Mechanics are mostly there. They can be a little janky with the physics. Sometimes they don't always work. Uh, but I did play with Jordan. Then after that, we played this game. And it <laughs> worked out pretty good. I think I had a good time. I'd like to see this. Uh, I think it's fair to say uh, it's kind of dead in the water. But I'd like to see maybe go free to play, man. But maybe. yeah, as it stands right now, what's the current price? Like nine bucks? Yeah. Yeah, 10 bucks. Yeah, you, you'll immediately know there, there's absolutely no one playing this game. I mean, it's like less than one person a week. It's like 0.4 or something like that. So mm -hmm. unless you want to buy a bunch of copies for your mates and do it that way, there's a bunch of charities. You just got to pass it. And it's kind of a shame. Womp, womp. Yeah, um, I, I, I mean... Uh, I, I was a little, I was a little miffed that the Steve overlay didn't work for uh, right click join, even though it does give you that option. But uh, when when Ven's like servers up, I wonder I wonder how busy that server list is. Just Linux Gamecast server. All right, there we go. <laughs> um, and this is this is not this is the sort of game where you need some people to play it with because it's not really fun on your own. The bots are kind of dumb, and it's you kind of you in this sort of game you kind of need the the shit talking because there's a lot there's a lot of flailing and goofy looking shit happening and having some friends along to laugh at it is uh, is pretty fun yeah you you need at least like some kind of active community or like ven said just like some friends you can con into this maybe if it went on sale for dirt cheap on a bundle or went free to play that would help a little bit otherwise what you get is a slightly fucky third person shooter with some dumb bots and an interesting gravity mechanic and some actually really cool level design like i mentioned in the in between segment there's there's a there's a area that just has like a bunch of balls and each of those balls has their own center of gravity so you gotta you get to do a little bit of orbital mechanic stuff and it's pretty neat especially when you swing around um but um but again like like i mentioned before the levels are huge and they really should be filled with people trying to murder you but they're not and so you kind of just left in this fugue state where you can you there, there's you can recognize that this is like a fun enough game if you can get some people going, but if you're in if you're stuck in forever alone mode, you're kind of just stuck in forever alone mode. Um, I will give it I will give it two chairs because the potential is there. It's the community isn't, and that's yeah. really the biggest strike against it. And honestly, I've played far worse and far more interesting shooters. Ballistic Overkill. Uh, the only real problem I have with this game is the fact that it's dead. And that is a very uh, definitive problem. Because the first time I launched it, Pedro, I... Pedro, how can you kill that? Which has no life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is dead may never die. Uh, but... Like the first time I launched it, I I saw that there was one like official looking server, and I joined it. It was empty. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then I sat there and I waited for like fifteen minutes, and no one else came. I was oh, like, you did the same thing too. It was like maybe if one yeah. person's in there, this will attract more. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, you see that. one player here. It's like, oh, maybe someone else will join. No, 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 no 15 nope, minutes. Nope. I, and I, I just was wanted still to throw that just... out there mainly because we've done it in two completely different time zones. So. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> but yeah, I this uh, the the footage you're watching is me playing against bots up to a hundred kills, and that was fun for about twenty minutes. After that, I hit I hit the uh, the score cap, and I was done. That's that's it. Uh, it does look like fun, and you know if you could find like a full server with a bunch of people, it would be awesome and really a lot of fun but that won't happen unless you can hurt enough people on your own uh or i don't know maybe the game sees a bit of a resurgence like fence suggests make make it free to play um it's it looks absolutely chaotic and insane and it could be a lot of fun and i don't think you're gonna need any blowback we'll if know. this does go free to play because <laughs> the people that bought it would be happy to have People, people to play yeah. with, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's weird too, because like clearly there was a community for this at some point, because there are a bunch of workshop maps that are developed. It and, must like, was, it, was did it like a drug out in early access for a long time? Or so? I don't know the I, 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 th I think that may have been the case, because they like 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 I mentioned before, this um, this showed up on Game Grumps actually, mm. so it's yeah. like it got it got mm. some decent coverage. Um, but I guess just time, time and tide was not too kind. You know what probably uh, happened to this game? Nazis. 
Fortnite. Yeah, same thing. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Long, it is long. epic after all. <laughs> all right, all right. Coming, coming up next. We got, we got some hate mail for you. We're, we're, we're going to tell you how to smash that PayPal, fam. And well, much like uh, you Canadian Ubuntu's unicorn decision, lube, cherry. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's your title. That is uh, certainly nope. a mental picture no, that you now have in your head, and <laughs> no, that that, that that's, that's the fucking cover art. Um. <laughs> but yeah, if you would like to see uh, Jordan take a bath in a fifty-gallon uh, drum of cherry flavored lube, who wouldn't uh, send us some fanfic? <laughs> Yeah, send us some us fan know. art. <laughs> you can go to LinuxGameCast.com. You can mm. submit your fan art, your fanfic, or uh, if you'd like to donate to that particular cause, Jordan's wish list is up there on the wish lists button. Where so. you can find a unicorn mask. <laughs> yes. We, we can make him a real boy. <laughs> I don't want to be a real boy. I want to be a sticky unicorn. Don't don't buy him that. It'd be like it'd be cruel, but like getting him plastic. He'll suffocate himself. Don't do it. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was going to do that anyways. I'm, I'm a big fan of David Carradine. Yeah, he's going to Carradine himself one way or another, so you can have a hand in it. So let us know. <laughs> if, 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 if you, want, if you want to have a hand in it, you got to contact you know, me privately. This was <laughs> just in case we didn't set you off with like the AMD shit or the 32-bit shit or the Steam. Or, yeah, this... this Driving it home, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, do you, do you, do you want to lube me up? Send us I mean, this episode's a wash already, so might as well. I've never been more flaccid in my life. <laughs> That's because you need more lube. No, I don't believe so. All right. Need more unicorn lube. <laughs> well, uh, apparently Dawn uh, is uh, very much working with the theory that uh, all the clones have been replaced with androids. Beep, and beep, the beep. androids... Yeah, uh... And he says, I think the current Pedro is V36.9.0.0-4. He has been updated to the 5X Linux... Uh, has he been updated to the 5X Linux kernel yet? It's late. I've been drinking. Uh, maybe check his uname and give him a reboot since updates are done in the background and should have already been downloaded in the last few weeks. I, I, don't, I don't know, Pedro. Screw you, do, do, Don. Do, My uptime is off the charts. Nah, uh, <laughs> do you, do you so, 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 here's, 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 here's a question for you. Same excuse you use at work when you fuck up. You're like, hey, man, I've been drinking. Um, do, 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 do you, <laughs> Pedro, do you panic at the sight of sax? Because that'll indicate what kernel version you're running. Wait, sax with an X or yeah. with a CK? You, can, you have to selectively acknowledge it. Are, are you susceptible to <laughs> okay. BDOS? Can a BDOS attack take you out? <laughs> the bees no, but surface. if you throw a tuba at my head, I'm pretty sure that knocked well, me out. I mean, you can either do bees or bricks, man. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's multi-vector. Uh, <laughs> bricks. I'll take bricks. bricks. How, about, how, about how, how, brick? how about bricks? Bees carrying bricks, bricks so that when they sting bees. you, they also hit you with a brick. <laughs> we'll, we'll hit you with our compressed bee technology. It'll be awesome. Okay, if you can uh, train it's bees to carry brick made bricks to drop on people's heads... Yeah, listen, man, I will use my trained attack bricks. They will. <laughs> look, look, listen, this, this is this is just ri this is ripe for ID uh, mining DLC for fucking or surprise mechanics for brick simulator. Bees. Yep. All right. <laughs> surprise. All right. Up next from Andrew. Andrew says. Our old relationship revolved around this kinky crap with Patreon. I have since abolished that veganism crap, actually, or think actually back in November of 2018. Bloody meat is too delicious. What is your preferred friendship dues method, as in the lowest tax slash penalty slash fee? Aside from those vegan fucks at Patreon, <laughs> is PayPal it? <laughs> what? Suppose I could send a check from the bank if you preferred that, really. These days we have options, just whatever you prefer. Let's be friends again until my check stops clearing. Uh, I mean, we, we, we you, the best way to give us money is Bitcoin, right? Then the cryptocurrency that will upturn all <laughs> global currency. Really, the best way to do it is Patreon, because that takes the least amount of cut, ironically. But since you hate us vegans... Um... <laughs> Or, 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 or at least people from Vega, the planet Vega. Vegan. Yeah. Oh, jeez, man. Let's hope the aliens don't show up. They're like, oh, we're vegans. They're like, oh, so the planet's vegans. Like, no, we don't eat meat, bitches. Died. <laughs> um, <laughs> PayPal. Uh, we have a PayPal button on the thing, and it's got like a recurring donation. Or magic internet, buddy. 
That's cool. I mean, as long as that yeah, check clears, man. Bonzi, listen, you, Bonzi, can, buddy. you can absolutely <laughs> buy Pager's friendship. Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm surprised that you had to think about that. You're like, yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> no, no. I was thinking, it's like, okay, how much of a shill am I? And then I realized, oh, wait, I am pretty much a shill. So, like, listen, man, we've been doing this no for one like, gives me anything. So, for like, six, <laughs> oh, no one gives, gives you anything. How's that 1080 doing? As well, as that, the 1080, that was that. 18, 20, 20, <laughs> the Steam controller, yeah. the. And the, I the, keep the, shilling the, for the, the people who gave me those things. Hi, Wimpy. Hi, um, T Brown. Hi, um, Walk Down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mike G, once uh, that mouse arrives, I will say hi to you too. <laughs> Again, from the person that gets nothing. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I got, I got like the first. Actually, no, the T Brown Memorial Mike was Mike was technically the first thing. The first thing. Hey, man, we've been able to do this with everyone's help. I mean, it's not like we're, we're like swimming in dough or anything, and that's kind of awesome that we get away with what we get away with. So, Indeed. I, after this show, and you're still here. Kudos. <laughs> oh, only the hardcore hardcore is making it high. You, you're the special ones. Either that or you forgot to cut this shit off and you're doing it right now. No, no, and no. You're no, running no, to your PC because people are listening. There, there, there is a not insignificant portion of our audience who have just died at their desks and they just did not leave the channel and it's, it's still playing. I, I feel bad because somebody's probably tied up in a room and this is being used as like torture. Like the, so, so the, what, like how, like how Arnold Schwarzenegger uses red soap yeah pretty much man <laughs> that's a terrifying thought but we're, we're, we're the red sonia of linux gaming podcasts on that terrifying bob show let's cue the music you can always find us around 9 30 eastern standard moon sign until you better stick around starting in july we're gonna be starting an hour early for the live listeners it's gonna be awesome and we're gonna be doing that so we can hang out with you more in the after shows because we're getting old man that's the thing anyway if you're gonna hold of me um i'm at vin stone on the twitter nets I think at Vin Stone, or just at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Easy to find. I'll give you a pro tip. If you don't, go through the trouble of like even creating a little picture avatar on mass.com. I'm not going to add you because I can't tell you from a bot and I'm too lazy to check otherwise. <laughs> I'm Brigitte Nielsen. You can find me and my husband, Flavor Flav, reviewing ger- various giant clocks at The Burning Fool on Twitter or on our Mastodon. Uh, I'm, a, I'm at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I knew a Sonia once uh, who dyed her hair red, like very bright red. Uh, oh, yeah, but I remember you th- telling me about her. You dated for a while. No, we didn't. <laughs> that's. Oh, that's, right, right, that, right. That's because you couldn't defeat her in single combat? Nori, I'm sorry. I made that up. That wasn't an actual conversation, Patreon, when I had. <laughs> Last week. Don't worry. I'm going to get shit for it anyway. Uh. But yeah, you can find me at unaccounted for getting into all kinds of shit uh, on Twitter, and that's pretty much it. Just Twitter. We, we fucking learned something this <laughs> week. Didn't we? I, th- I, th- I, th- I think we've actually like reduced the amount of information available to the general population. <laughs> well, it's not a light bulb. It's a dark. It's a darkness absorber. Yeah, that's... Indeed. Oh, man, they're hot now. Hot it's patrons. so sexy. We got Arthurin. Foxy. Oh. Empty atomic ass. Mike G. I was surprised it accepted that part. It didn't at first. Drummer 7, Aldi, Sapolo. Making up the top tier. All right, let's see how many we can get. Jupiter Broadcasting. Renaud, Lutris, Rene, Stephen, Orloran, Craig. oh, Mr. Manger Sr., Nathan, no, Martin, Martin Tanuva, Simcha, Mir, Matt, Nick, Sissim T, Andro, Steve. Steve Fepacool, Gaius, Yabo, David, Michael M, Ben W, Corey, Matt C, Mike, Nine Bullets, Ha, Zoe, Jack, Mini Jack, Dirty D, Gonzo, Mr. Amish, Kronkalonga, Chad, Basil, Dominic, Belric, Odung, Lixers, Sorceress, Vert Algon, Adam. Uh oh, you've summoned Frank. Mike, oh shit, we we got update, we got update Frank's number. I know. He's Elvius, Frank's creeper, man. Bradley, Jill, Steve. Get out of here, Frank. No one likes you. Shoot, shoot. W. Get off my property. 20. No, don't screw John off, Frank. Mr. He's the best Red part of the show. Damn it, Jordan. Admiral what have you done? Come back, Frank. Here and Mag. Now, right M. J. J. Rulo. Special <laughs> power, Frank. Do it. And Activate. Hop-lock. Activate. Ah, I'm getting Frank sick of ending. No. <laughs> Dynafire. Everyone will see it next week. Masterful special effects. <laughs> 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 
Terry Gilliam would be proud. Patreon dollars at work. <laughs> Are anti photons a thing? Yes. Dark matter. Five dudes. <laughs>